she didn't get the proper care that she that she should have. And when when they found out about her cells and my grandfather used to bring her home from the hospital, she got kind of worried because uh, being a black person at John Hopkins, it was too many doctors that was in her room at the time. And she knew something was, was, was wrong uh, for a black person to get that much attention for so many doctors. And we didn't find out till, um, till way later that uh, they was, uh, researchers. Come on, Miss Hope. Come on. This is Hope Lax. Yeah. This is Mrs. Hey, Lax, uh, Ron's wife. So come on closer. You see. All right. So we all have a family talk. Keep talking. Yeah, they was they was researchers once they found out her, her cells was living outside the body. And uh we come to know that uh all of them wasn't licensed doctors at the time that was uh treating her. Yes. Correct? Correct. Yeah. So basically, um, once they found out, they, they took the cells and they found out they were growing, what they decided was <laughs> that they needed more. So the researchers were there to figure out, you know, how to harvest more cells. And then even after her death, they still went back and took more cells. Can I ask you a question? Do students understand what you mean when you yeah. talk about cells? Yeah, they do. They, they, okay. We got, we got, we've been prepped this. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so again, when you talk about these harvesting of the cells, your mother had passed away. Um, how did were they able to harvest more cells, and and and, and what kind of how did you feel about this? I mean, uh, like uh, how I didn't did know they two find... years later, but the way my my granddad uh, uh, David Lax uh, explained it to me, and you know, he was very concerned about Henrietta, knowing that she was getting worse each time she come from John Hopkins, and they was. Uh, there was a radiation radiation packs. A radiation packs they was uh putting in her and she just went downhill every time she uh came from uh John Hopkins and my dad was the one that took care of his mother as his father had to work. So um even right today, the hospitals don't treat patients with the respect and, and dignity today that I think they should. And Mr. Lax, and uh, again, the students gonna have questions. When you have a question, just raise your hand. The time, and again, and you, know, you too, everybody. But Mr. Lax, I'm, I'm gonna keep this going. Again, just raise your hand so we have you have a question. How did you feel about just even then and now? About this is your mother. This is not a medical experiment. This is your mom. I mean, how how did you feel at the time? How old were you when your mother passed away? I was about 15. 16, yeah, about 15 years old. Um, I felt that, you know, most every time we go somewhere, to, I go to someone to visit John Hopkins, they would want to do certain things with her cells and her body, and I always said no to them. And this is what, you know, what NIH, and they, they was in on it, and we had, they had meetings, they called in for meetings, and they, ne you know, they never would listen to anything we had to say totally taking control of uh, the healer cells. So, yes. so basically you never, you didn't feel that, uh, you didn't feel that they was there to treat your mother. You felt that they was just using her as an experiment. Right, because you know back in them days, John Hopkins was known for uh, research and in the black community, uh, it was a, a legend that you get snatched if you walk past John Hopkins at night. And uh, in the black community, they knew this. Uh, they feared this. So when my uh, grandmother was being treated and she seen so many doctors in the room, uh, she immediately suspected something was wrong. I mean, because of that fear that she had about John Hopkins and the research. And so, young.